Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Obviously, a few of you are at the uh, geography incursion, excursion. I guess everything's an incursion now these days, right? Uh, so for those of you, the faithful who are here, um, thanks for being here. And we're going to get started, as you can see, on areas of compound regions. This is actually going to be the first part of a two-part lesson. So make sure you hang around for tomorrow for the stunning conclusion. Now. I want you to think back to when we were in year 7, year 8, actually even earlier than that, when we were first learning how to work with areas of shapes. So, ooh, that sounds like a loud plane overhead. I promise that's not me. Um, when we look at areas of plane shapes, triangles, rectangles, circles, all the rest, we learned their formulas and what would happen is you might get given a single shape and then they would say, hey, work out the area of this shape or if we really wanted to throw a curveball at you we would give you the area and then say there might be some algebra some pronumerals like therefore find the radius of this circle if it has that area one of the very natural ways that we developed that knowledge was then to say well what if we gave you some combination of those kinds of shapes like a square with a circle cut out of it or a, uh, a circle with a triangle cut out of it, right? So these, we call these guys composite figures and there was a very basic strategy here. We combined all of those formulas and areas of plane shapes that we knew and then we said, well, these guys are just made up of several of those pieces. You've got to know when to add them together You've got to know when to subtract as well, but in principle, these problems were no more complicated than the ones we were doing before. There was just a little extra work to do those. So when we talk about compound regions in uh, integral calculus, uh, we mean things like this. Uh, regions where there's lots of different parts. Uh, you've seen before, we've had to look at you know, positives and negatives and treating them differently. So we're going to see versions of that today um, and tomorrow as well. Now, the first thing I want to point out, and it's uh, number one, just follow up from last lesson, and number two, um, a response to some of the working that we've been seeing coming from you guys when you send in questions or you're, you're having trouble with some of the problems. Um, please make sure you follow uh, the same series of steps that we said for all the earlier questions. Um, when you're dealing with integrals and the question is area, then you must, must sketch. Um, if they don't give you a diagram, it's essential. Even if they do give you a diagram, often the diagram needs to be drawn on and you need to like work out all the bits of pieces and how they fit together you must draw okay now I know a lot of you um, will do anything to avoid graphing and sketching and um, honestly I can relate to that because in the first instance it's time-consuming and it's hard and you're like I'd rather do the other stuff that I'm much better at and much quicker at but I promise you, um, for these questions, they're really an essential um, piece of the puzzle. Uh, it's a little bit like um, trying to drive without any rear view mirrors. It's like, how do you know what's going on around you? How do you know when you're supposed to change lanes? Like, you can't see. And in the same way, you're working out areas. If you can't see them, you're sort of setting yourself up for trouble. So we're going to sketch with these compound regions. You're going to see that step two there, identifying the integral. Uh, there's a little more work to there because of the complexity of the kinds of shapes we're looking at. Um, and then the last thing is very, very similar. We're going to combine whatever areas we've got. Perhaps we need to subtract some, we need to add some, and then we come up with a conclusion. So that's enough preamble. Let's have a look at our first example. Um, I've given you one here where I provided the sketch. For the next question, I'm not going to provide you a sketch, so I'm just warming you up right now. However, um, wherever you're at, uh, this question, you still need to have your own sketch here. So let me talk through what we've got whilst you, in your piece of paper, um, draw a picture of what we've got here. So it says find the shaded area, which I hope you can see in purple there. And the area is bounded between uh, three different lines. Uh, you've got this straight line, y equals x in red. You've got this blue line, the uh, concave down parabola, and then lastly, you've got the x-axis underneath, okay? Now, in order to find this shaded area, even though it's all together in one piece, it actually is um, a compound region, a composite figure, if you like, in disguise, because there isn't one nice, neat integral that you can write that gives you that entire area. This, in, this area that you can see here is not underneath a curve, it's underneath multiple curves. So our strategy here is to work out, well, let's take one piece at a time and work out each individually. So for now, if you've got a rough sketch of this, and if you can't quite read it there, by the way, it's uh, y equals x and then y equals 4 minus x squared on 9. 
I hope you've got a rough version of this in your book now because we're now going to use this diagram as our mechanism for trying to chart a path through here, okay? So this is, I guess if you like, the second half of the sketch step. Now what I've got is, um, you can see here, this part is a straight line. Actually, let me uh, do it in a clearer color so you can see it there. This part is underneath y equals x. So that straight line there, underneath that section, I can work out this area here with a single integral, okay? And that will give me a value. And when I cross over that red line going to the right, you can see that this section of the graph here is a whole different curve, right? This guy over here is not underneath y equals x, it's actually underneath the parabola. Okay, so I'm gonna deal, deal with each one, one at a time. And in fact, to help us do that, I'm gonna call this guy a one for area one, and then I'm gonna call this guy a two for area two. Now, in order to work out the area of this first shape, I want you to notice, I did say we could work out a single integral that will enclose this red area, a one. But in fact, I want you to think back a few lessons. I don't even need to use that much heavy duty mathematics to work this out. Integration is not required because this is a simple kind of shape. What kind of shape have we got here, guys? Can you write down the formula we're going to use in the chat? We need to see a few people wake up to that. Yes, very nice, Max. That wouldn't be the way that I write it, but it'll do for me. Okay, yes, good. I'm starting to see. This is our area of a triangle formula, right? Now, obviously, to work out the area of a triangle, I need some dimensions. As you guys are mentioning, I need a base and I need a height as well. So this is not um, something that's provided to us and I've given you very deliberately no grid so you can't just read off the coordinates. So how will I find out the coordinates of, uh, or I should say the dimensions of this triangle, okay? Well, I hope you can recognize that the key piece of information, wrong color, the key piece of information is the coordinates of this intersection point. Well done, Sasha. Okay, fantastic, we spotted. If I can work out where that intersection point is, uh, sort of really lucky for me, it's almost like I set this up to be a straightforward example, that same set of coordinates is gonna give me, firstly, the height of my triangle and also the base. So why don't we go ahead and work that out? Um, to find the intersection point, and I'm even gonna write down that that's what I'm doing, again, so that I don't have these uh, random equations just coming out of nowhere. I wanna communicate why it is that I'm working out what I'm working out. How do I find the intersection point between two curves? Can you guys go ahead and tell me in the, in the chat, what am I gonna do to locate that? Any suggestions? Simultaneous equations, in again with the first, fantastic, okay, you're very good. So what I've got, in a sense, is uh, looking over here in the top right-hand corner, I've got an equation here, and an equation here, and I'm gonna solve them simultaneously. Now, since they're both provided to you with y being the subject, I can just let them be equal to each other and then go ahead and solve. So let's have a go at that. I'm solving for four minus x squared on nine, there's the parabola, for that being equal to x, okay? So this looks a bit messy. Let's, uh, let's try and simplify this a little bit. I'm gonna get rid of all the fractions, so I'll multiply through by nine. Uh, that gives me 36, take away x squared equals nine x. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, rearrange this a little bit. So I might add x squared to both sides and subtract 36 from both sides. So that would leave me with zero on the left-hand side, and it would leave me with x squared plus 9x minus 36 on the right hand side, okay? Um, all right, so now I've got this. What am I gonna do with this? What, what am I trying to find again? I wanna find an x value that satisfies this, right? So I'm going to look for a pair of factors that'll help me out. So has anyone already worked out the pair of numbers that's gonna be useful to me here? I want them to add to nine and multiply to negative 36. Okay, fantastic, well done. Yep, I'm very proud of you. So I want plus 12, negative three. So I go x plus 12, x minus three, that equals zero. And um, I can see from each of those factors, each one will give me a solution. So you can see that this factor here will give me a solution of x equals negative 12. And then this second factor over here gives me a solution of three. Now, we were solving a quadratic, so we shouldn't have been that surprised that we got two solutions, but 
I don't want two solutions, I only want one of them. So which is the one that's relevant and how can you tell? Any suggestions? Out of these two values, which is the one I want to focus on? Okay, I'm seeing a few answers turning up. Can anyone tell me for bonus points why? Like how did you know that that was the value three that I should be focusing on? Okay, yes, excellent. <laughs> Well, Max, it is easier, but that's not the legitimate reason. Um, in fact, sometimes you're gonna have to choose the other one. In this case, as many of you have identified, I want the positive one, um, not because it's above the x-axis, but because it's to the right of the y-axis. These are x-values, so that's horizontal, right? So um, an x-value could be to the right, and I could still be down, so it's not about being above or below the x-axis, it's to the right of the y-axis. And I guess another way Sasha has said, it's in the, the top, the first quadrant, I guess would be the way we say it.